One of the goals of studying finance is to learn tools that help us to make better investment decisions. And from a corporate finance perspective, the investment decision is whether we should build a new factory, whether we should buy some other company, whether we should introduce a new product. In order to make those decisions, we need to calculate the cost of capital. That is, how much is it costing us to finance this investment? And in a previous video, I discussed the weighted average cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital is just an average of the cost of equity, cost of debt, and cost of preferred stock that are used to finance the firm. One thing I didn't discuss in these previous videos, one on the weighted average cost of capital, one on calculating the cost of common stock, is what's the cost of new issues of common stock? Well, it turns out that issuing new shares of common stock is more costly than financing with existing shares. Why is that? Well, new shares are usually underpriced. They're sold at a discount. What do we mean by that? They're sold below the market value. And you can see that commonly in initial public offerings, where a private firm goes public. Companies like eBay and Netscape from a number of years ago, or more, more currently, uh, Twitter, for example. These companies may price out their shares at $25 a share, for example, and that's the price that a mutual fund or a pension fund is going to pay to buy the shares of the stock. But as soon as it opens on an exchange, that price might shoot up to $28, $30, or even $50 a share. Why do they underprice? Well, it makes it easier for the investment banker to place the shares, to, have them, to sell them to mutual funds and pension funds. There are also going to be flotation costs. These are the fees paid to the investment bankers. The investment bankers are not going to be providing the service of helping a corporation issue these new shares for free. So they have to get paid, and they get paid quite handsomely for helping to take a firm public or to help a firm issue shares, an existing public firm, to issue new share, uh, additional shares, which we oftentimes refer to as a seasoned offering as opposed to an initial public offering. Now, one model we used to find the cost of equity is the Gordon model or the Gordon growth model. And this is a model that prices stocks based on the assumption that dividends will grow at a constant rate of G forever. And it turns out that the price today is going to be the dividend one period in the future divided by the cost of equity minus the growth rate of dividends. If we rearrange the terms, we can solve for the cost of equity, RS. It's going to be D1 over P0, which just turns out to be the dividend yield, plus G, which turns out to be the capital gains. If we want to figure out the cost of new issues of common stock, we need to modify the previous equation. You can see this basically looks the same, except instead of calling it RS, we're going to call it RN, the cost of new issues, and D1 over N sub N instead of being divided by P sub zero. N sub N are just the net proceeds that the firm receives from issuing these shares. So instead of getting the market price, they're going to get less because the, the, uh, the shares may be discounted, may be underpriced, as well as those flotation costs, again, plus the growth rate of dividends. Another way to write that same equation, instead of putting uh, the net proceeds from the new issue, is that we look at the percentage of underpricing and flotation costs. So let's say that this turns out to be 10%, then you'd take 1 minus 0 0.10, or you'd take the market price and multiply it by 0 0.90, okay, 90%. So you'd use 90% of the market price as your denominator here to calculate the, uh, the cost of new issues of common stock. 
Let's take a look at an example. Suppose Duke Company expects to pay a dividend of $4 next year, has a current market price of $50, and expected growth rate of dividends of 5%. Let's find the cost of equity. Well, plugging into the equation, we just take next period's dividend divided by the current market price plus the growth rate of dividends, which is 0.05 or 5%. Okay, we work that out, it turns out to be 13%. Now, let's determine the cost of new common stock, okay, RN. If the new shares can be sold for 47 instead of 50, and the flotation costs are 250, we're going to have that same $4 dividend, but instead of dividing by 50, we're going to divide by 47 minus the 250 flotation costs, or 4450, plus again that growth rate of dividends of 0.05 and so it turns out to cost us 14 percent instead of 13 percent so you can see that because of the the underpricing and the flotation costs issuing new shares can be more expensive than financing internally uh, new projects using existing equity in the firm